Hey guys, it's Brennan the Paleo Dude, and I'm back with another Jurassic World figure review. Tonight, we'll be taking a look at the Super Colossal Carnotaurus Toro. Now, this figure is massive, and I was not sure on how I was going to get my hands on it, but I was at a mall, I think it was Metro Town, um, and they had EB Games. I stopped in EB Games, and lo and behold, they had this massive figure. Um, it was it was $90 Canadian with tax. Um, yeah, 80, 89 I think it came out to be. But um, So it was 80 plus tax, but I had a 10% off coupon, and my mom spared me 20 bucks, so I got it for like 60. Um, but yeah, I think in the States it's 50, which is outstanding. That price is phenomenal. But um, so this figure was very really cool about it. It comes with that battle damage scar on the snout. Um, they carved it, they painted it. It's nice to see that Jurassic World's willing to still do the gore, like battle damage figures. Um, the box is typical of the Super Colossal boxes. It has like the rest of the body kind of on there, kind of like it's part of the package or whatever, part of the figure, so that's cool. Um, they got Toro on the front of the package, which is nice. Um, I mean, they're on, on the front of, like, most Camp Cretaceous boxes, but whatever. It shows um, a kid next to it to show how big it is, and it tells you it's unassembled. So it's Jurassic World, Camp Cretaceous, Dino Escape. And it just says Netflix on the, on the back. Um, you get the rest of the characters on each side of the box. And you got some features on the back. Um, it tells you how big the figure is. I'm loving that outline. Hopefully the tail is actually that long. It says it's got a gigantic bite. I'm loving the new um, catchphrase, I guess that is. Empowering the next generation through play. Very nice. And it has the next um, mini blind bag figures up. Hopefully these come to Canada because they're looking sweet. We've got Irritator, Syats, Bumpy. Um, we've got the Bioluminescent Parasaurolophus, Tarbosaurus, Camp Cretaceous Stegosaurus, which is amazing. I love that color. Um, this new Pteranodon, which I've actually seen the colors leaked in a large, I think the 6-inch figures or 12-inch figures or whatever they're called. Um, and something that looks like the JP3 Brachiosaurus, which is a crazy thought to think about. But imagine if they did that full scale. Um, that's so cool. And then it shows again a uh, kid next to it showing its size, eating tiny little bumpy. And then, yeah, it goes into the mouth. And it says it can hold up to 20 tiny ones, little mini dinos. And then it says Carnotaurus Toro on the top. So let's dive right in. Um, the teeth on this are plastic, like they're a separate piece. So there's no scuffing. If this bites anything, the paint's not going to wear because it's got no paint. It's just a different plastic. And I love that Mattel's doing that with their new di new dinosaurs because, um, well, they're big ones rather, like the Rex and whatever. Because, of course, kids, when they chomp the dinosaur down on other dinosaurs, there's a chance that the paint's going to chip or scuff. But on some of these newer ones, the teeth are plastic and there's no scuffing or chipping with those, which I love. And they're rubbery too. Um, so the color of Toro is heavily, heavily reminiscent of the first wave um, figure. It, it's a tad bit lighter um, shade of the purple and the, the red, but it's literally just almost bang on. Um, it's, it's more closer to that figure than the actual Toro figure, which is this like browny, red-brown color. Um, the scar's matching up quite well. But yeah, no, um, I love that it's looking more like the um, 2018 version of the Carnotaurus. That's really cool. Even the arms, too. Like, the underbelly's got that white. Um, the new Toro figure has a darker underbelly. So yeah, no, I'm loving that. That's, that's amazing. And I'm glad we're finally getting this, um, like a Carnotaurus as a Super Colossal. I know I've seen leaks um, on the Giga or Giga, um, the Giganotosaurus figure becoming a Super Colossal. Um, and we've already got like Blue and Dominus. It'd be neat to see the Endoraptor. Um, it probably won't be used or whatever as a um, super colossal, but, um, and I don't even think they're gonna do E750 as a super colossal, 
but it would be nice to see that. Um, something realistic, I think they'd do. Um, they might do a Dilophosaurus, or they might do um, a repaint of blue as a normal raptor. Or even Spinosaurus. I'd love a Spinosaurus. Super colossal. Um, it'd be sick if they did a super colossal bull rex. Um, that'd be really neat. Like with the proper details on the head and whatever, not just the repaint. That'd be sick. Um, I think there's something holding its butt in. <laughs> its arms are so tiny. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna, we're gonna go from this side. It seems like, um, it seems like it's packaged similar to the um, Ocean Protector Mosasaurus, where they no longer use plastic bags to keep the parts in, they're just kind of in there. And that is nice, that is really nice. Um, I'm hoping that's the case, um, as it really reduces the amount of single-use plastic that these figures um, come with. <laughs> Um, still there's tape and stuff, of course, they gotta hold the box together, but that's really cool if they are starting to just use less plastic. Yes, so the tail is held in with this weird contraption, so let's just tug that up then. You got that hollow hole with um, this you gotta take out, not too hard. Um, so now you got limbless Toro. That neck is phenomenal. I think it, yes, it rotates like the Indominus neck. Man, and they did great job on the spray on the bottom. Again, this is giving me major um, 2015 Fallen Kingdom, or 2018 Fallen Kingdom Carnotaurus vibes. Um, the jaws can open quite wide. Wow, that's actually very wide. Um, you can see inside there. And fit like well my hands a bit big but <laughs> you get the gist that's a lot of space in there too the head's kind of rubbery um, which is nice but yeah let's get the rest of the parts out oh and also on the back before we do that you can see broken cage fence blah 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 that looks really nice um, really digging the forest and the the fences in the background of this box so it looks like there's only a plastic bag around one foot. Now that's odd. Um, interesting, so it's, they, they got one bag and it's got the instructions inside so I can see why they would do that. Um, but the rest of the limbs are not in packages so that's pretty good. You can see there's a tail and the legs. And you attach them, it tells you how to attach them. Um, and then there's it eating all the little ones. It's got a different assortment on there. It looks like they've got the Ceratosaurus and Carno in there. That Dimorphodon, that's cute. Okay, so let's get the tail out. Oh, it's long too. Oh, I love long tail figures. Like, whenever Mattel is able to stick a long tail on something, and it's not restricted by packaging, that's nice. Okay, both the feet have plastic on them rip, but I think that's just to keep the toes from scuffing, um, so I can see why they'd do that. <laughs> but yeah, the tail wasn't in any package or whatever. So we got one leg. Wow, those are these are like scaled up versions of the um, Series 1 Carno. I, it's, it's, it's basically just scaled up version of it. Um, maybe not so much, there's more detail on them, but yeah, no, that's cool. They don't have the markings, the black markings or the dark markings on them. They uh, just have, um, very large scales on them, which is interesting. We'll see what it looks like when it's all put together. Even the Toro figure actually comes with color on the legs. So we'll start with the tail. I'm really digging how long that tail is. It can't even fit on camera, there we go. It seems to be, it's not on a ball joint, it just goes back and forth. It just wags like that. The tail has no paint on it, um, but even the Wave 1 and 
um, Toro, Carnotaurus, mainline figures, they have paint on the tail, but they don't have it on this. Um, this rotates. I don't know why you want to do that, but it rotates. Um, now let's get these legs on. There we go. Nice snap. Very crisp. Let's get this other one on. Where's the snap? There we go. There's the snap. I just had to pad it a bit. Okay, so let's yeet the box. Um, oh, and the feet rotate. Oh, that looks sweet. The proportions are perfect. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. I'm losing light here. I have to readjust my table. There we go. We've got light again. Yay. Though my shadow might be a little in the way, whatever. So there it is. All oh, the details are phenomenal. Um, it kind of leaves you wanting more with the paint scheme. Um, like I said, you can see Toro has paint on his, I mean, her legs and tail. Um, so that would have made more sense to include the pattern all the way down on the tail and even the legs. But I can also see maybe they made that sacrifice where they didn't want to fully wrap the legs in plastic. And that would protect the paint. But if they didn't have paint, they wouldn't have to wrap it in plastic. So maybe they decided just to not paint the legs and tail to preserve plastic in the packaging. Um, but you can see there's loads of paint on this figure's leg and on the base of the tail even. Um, if we zoom out a bit, we can maybe try and fit it into scale and see. The legs, you can see what I mean by they're almost exactly like this Carnotaurus's legs. They're in the same positions. Um, seems like the body's in the same positions. The head might be a bit larger than usual, maybe not. And the tail is definitely longer. I'm loving how long that tail is. Um, but you can see, yeah, the, the feet practically line up right there. Um, same feet, the, the, the Carnotaurus figures always have these pointy feet. <laughs> They're very um, triangular in shape. Um, and then those tiny little arms that kind of look like they have sleeves on them built into the, the figure's plastic. They just rotate, they're not on a uh, ball joint or anything. It would've been cool if they were on a ball joint though, but you can just position them back like that. Um, and you can see they're just tiny, they almost look like human hands, which is a bit disturbing in my opinion. Um, <laughs> a little freaky actually, but if you just look past the fact that they have tiny little human hands, we're, we're fine. Um, you can stand it up too, let's see if it looks like better on the other angle without the scar. Yeah, without the scar on this angle, it just looks like the usual Carnotaurus, um, which is cool if you want to do just photography of the Carnotaurus without the scar. Um, you can stand it up too. We're just gonna open the mouth. And we're gonna see what that looks like. That is phenomenal, that is so cool. There, um, it's not actually that bright orange. The sun's going down and there's a lot of forest fires here, so it's kind of tinting it that orange. It's more of a reddy color in person, but that is so wicked with the jaw open and angled up. That is cool. That's phenomenal. Very cool figure overall. Um, it's worth, is it worth $90? Mm -hmm. Its size says yes, but the fact that you can get it cheaper in America says no, um, which is kind of sad, but um, it is what it is, right? There's importing and exporting charges and all that jazz going on and taxes due to COVID, and, and so Canada's not having the best right now, the best time. Let's try that position. I love that too, that is so cool. If you had like a big gyrosphere to put next to it and have amber collection um, humans in, that would be phenomenal. Wow, that is stunning. Um, definitely worth it. E even if you live in Canada and it's $90, um, get a friend from the States to pick one up for you or just um, 
I guess if you have an EB Games card, that's 10% off. You can save yourself 10 bucks on the figure. I think I hear a hummingbird. Oh my god, there's a hummingbird. Okay, wait. We're gonna look at the hummingbird. <laughs> um, let's see if we can spot it. It's on the branch somewhere. I see it. Do you see it, guys? It's right there. It's so tiny. Okay, it's hard to keep this still. So there's a hummingbird in my tree. We've got a little hummingbird feeder up for it and stuff. But okay, yeah, nice. Always a cool little surprise to get a uh, guest star, a live dinosaur on a video. Um, interesting. I, I heard it because it was like humming or its wings. You can have a distinct vibrating noise. It's kind of weird. Um, but anyways, this figure's amazing. Well worth it. Um, I for sure recommend picking it up. I know everyone in the States is fortunate to get it for such a cheap price, but um, yeah, there's other ways of getting it like online and stuff, though I'm not sure shipping would fare too well to Canada from the US. Oh, even with the shadows, it like amplifies the detail. It's awesome. I think on this side as well, you can see that they've got, I don't know if this was intentional, but there's markings on the body that look like scars, like there. These weird wrinkles like in X patterns and stuff. So it looks like it's been attacked by smaller dinosaurs and whatnot. Um, so that's really cool that they have those details in it as well. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. It was very fun to make. Um, and if you want to see more Jurassic content like this, be sure to subscribe and check out my channel for more videos just like this one. Okay, so again, hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.